speaking to our good friend Earl Young for the rest of the sermon time today on service and sacrifice. But here's what I love about this church family that I already know from only having been here a year and a half. You like to serve, and you serve in so many different ways that are all important. So on Wednesday, over a dozen women gathered at the Vanderpool's home to pack uh, hygiene items and other uh, supplies to send to Ukraine. And our kids will partner with them and complete some work during Camp Champion, and we'll send, their goal is to send 300 of those kits uh, to people in need uh, in Ukraine. Each summer, a group of our members and friends goes to Guatemala and builds homes with the organization Casas por Cristo. And so that is an important trip many of you have been on and have great memories of. Been doing that for many, many years. People serve in that way. There's countless other ways, other events and ongoing ways that many of you choose to serve given your talents and abilities. And I love watching you do it, and I'm grateful for it. You know, sometimes service can look pretty ordinary, and pretty everyday. Sometimes it can look big and flashy. Sometimes it takes a lot of physical ability. Sometimes we're at a place in life where we do things that don't take as much physical ability. And the Lord is grateful for all of those things. As we've been talking about spiritual disciplines and practices, we've rooted them in the teachings and life of Jesus. And Jesus had so much to say about service, and he modeled that for us. So when his disciples are having an argument about who's the greatest, like who's the number one disciple, and Jesus has to come back at them and say, anyone who wants to be the first must be the very last and the servant of all. So I'm not interested in your pedigrees. Don't, don't give me the letters after your name. I don't care about your income level or how important you are or the title you have. You want to be first, serve others, Jesus teaches. And of course, he models this. The weak before his crucifixion. He's gathered with his disciples. And John tells the story of as the disciples are entering, Jesus takes off his outer garment and he picks up a towel, wraps it around his waist, and he pours water in a basin and he washes his disciples' feet. And so sometimes service is glamorous, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it looks like packing supplies, sometimes it looks like building houses. Sometimes service looks like a towel in your hand. And sometimes service looks like a swab in your mouth. Take a minute and watch this video. I was quite young at 19. Nobody Nobody would would have have said said two years before, before, here's here's an Olympian candidate. Nobody would have seen that. He's a good 400 meter runner, but to run world class in a two year period, very unusual. We uh, set a new world record in the 4 by 400 relay, which the gold medal is in. When you win something like this, I think you're bound to share it with folks. If you're going to make the Olympic team, you're going to have to devote everything. It can't be, gee, I wish I was doing this, I wish I was doing this. No. This is where your total focus goes. 24 by 7. You will put your body through things that the average person doesn't. You fight to stay alive, and I'm going to tell you, with this disease, you've got to fight to stay alive. Christine was the only match out of 22 million on file at the time for my body. Now, were there others out there? Sure. She was the only one that had signed up to be a match, the only one that had volunteered to save a life if a life could be saved with her DNA, with her stem cell. We began six years ago, what we call a Earl Young's team. This is all about awareness and registering. All we're asking folks to do in the beginning is just swab, just register for every 10 diagnosed with a blood cancer, only four find a match. There are babies dying. There are 71-year-old men dying. There are grandmas dying. There are young moms dying. While their match is walking down the street, clueless that they could save their life. Not everyone gets called, so it's like they should feel at least 
very fortunate and special to to be the one. It's like when when I do something for someone else, now all of a sudden I'm more grateful for what I have, and and just my heart overflows with joy and gratitude. Since we began, we've swabbed uh, 22,000 students. More importantly, we're just about to announce our 100th match. 100 people. Uh, they get to have life. Would you join me in welcoming our friend Earl Young to the stage? I want to follow Beck. I just learned that from my buddy Beck. So. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Earl Young, Preston Road member, Olympic gold medalist, and founder of Earl Young's team, which is one of our ministry partners here at Preston Road. So Earl, first things first, just give us the quick overview of the gold medal. What a story. I was uh, actually a, a 19-year-old at uh, Abilene Christian University that uh, prior to to that time, Abilene Christian had become famous through a fellow named Bobby Morrow. Maybe some of you uh, with gray hair remember Bobby Morrow. He attended Abilene Christian as a sophomore, won the 100, the 200, and anchored the sprint relay in uh, the Olympics in Melbourne, Australia. And uh, I just have to tell this part of it. It's, it's just a turning point in my life. I'm sitting in class, 17 years old in high school. Uh, I probably would have ended up at Occidental in Southern California, but I get a call from the registrar's office to call my dad. I call my dad, and he said, son, he said, Bobby Morrow and Oliver Jackson are here in my office and want to take us to lunch. Can you get out of school? I hopped in that 55 Chevy and scooted up there as quick as I could, and by golly, there was Bobby Morrow. Biggest thing, Bobby was on the cover of Life, Sports Illustrated. Bobby was known all over the world at that time. Big name. Put Abilene Christian on the map, quite honestly. And there he was out there for the Coliseum Relays, and he and Oliver drove out to the valley to my dad's office. And Oliver uh, told me a bit about Abilene Christian. Now, Oliver could embellish. Uh, it, was, it was a little Spartan back in those days compared to what it is today. But... Uh, I knew that mom and dad would be pleased if I went to Abilene Christian Church of Christ School, the way I was raised, and uh, also as a place where Bobby Morrow was graduating. So that's how I ended up at, at uh, Abilene Christian. And then, as I said in the, in the video, uh, uh, Josh, uh, I, I ran 49.6 in high school at age 17. Nobody would have recognized that as Olympic potential. Over the next two years, I improved rather dramatically, uh, did make the Olympic team, ran the Open 400. Uh, I got six in the finals. I tied the Olympic record, but it was a fast race. There were five boys ahead of me. We did rent, win the uh, 4 by 400 and they give you a remembrance for that, uh, as I brought today. This uh, is an antique like the guy showing it to you. But uh, this is Rome 1960, uh, the same one that names more recognizable than Earl Young, like Cassius Clay uh, and some others we had in, in that game. But I, uh, I am still the 11th youngest uh, Olympic gold medalist. I'm proud of that. I was the youngest on that team. And... Uh, and, and Brothers and sisters, this, this, this medal has been very influential in my life, as you might realize. Uh, so, Earl, let me ask you, you, you probably thought at the time this medal would be the defining thing of your life. And then about 10 years ago, you received a very difficult diagnosis. So can you tell us how you found out about that and how you were of that. Yeah, Josh, I like to, like to say now that the two most defining times of my life uh, is winning, winning the gold and uh, 
being told that I had acute myeloid leukemia with an FLT3 mutation, which means you have the worst you can possibly have. And uh, checked in that uh, night to Medical City. I was there for four months. Uh, my wife by my side that, that four months. It's, uh, it's, it's tough on a family to face the fact that your husband, your dad could not make it through. I've known folks now that haven't made it through. It's, it's a tough, it's a tough disease. What uh, they said, uh, they do a bone marrow transplant. All, all that was just words to me. I, I had clueless on what was going to happen. But as it turned out, just two weeks before I was diagnosed in Offenburg, Germany, and some of you have met her because she's been over here, Christine Wag swabbed like we're asking you between the age of 18 and 55 today to do, just swab, three swabs, put those on file, and maybe one day you're found to be a match. Well, Christine was found, as I said, to be the only match, the only match out of 22 million that were on file at the time for Earl Young. It is now, if you, if you check my blood, uh, prior to, to being diagnosed, I was uh, type B uh, male, I am now O female. <laughs> it's the only change that took place. But, but if you check my blood, I'm O female, which is a wonderful thing because it means that Christine has totally taken over my immune system. <clears throat> she runs my immune system. And for you guys that kid about women running your lives, <clears throat> check on me. <clears throat> so got, Earl, got, so got, somebody you didn't know <clears throat> <clears throat> sacrificed in order for your life to be saved. So talk about what that meant for you and how that inspired you to begin this organization. Josh, it came over, over a period of time. That was 12 years ago. It took a couple of years to uh, get back on my feet. And still today, you have remnants of it hanging around. I'm very blessed, though, very blessed. I've made it 12 years from age 71 to be given 12 years of life. Ah, there's no one more blessed, believe me. And I knew that I couldn't be running back and forth to, to Africa like I had been. Uh, at the time, I was helping a, a friend of mine put a company together, and I knew I couldn't put the same intensity into it. So I began to think on something I had learned in those two years. And I want you to remember this. Only four out of ten people, only four out of ten find a match. Six people don't find a match, and they die. And the sad side is their match is walking down the street with no awareness that they could save a life. It's an awareness program that we miss in this country, on, pardon me, on this disease. Those people don't have to die. If we could just get the word out and if people like yourselves would register. Going through the, the process of, uh, of giving uh, stem cells is, is easy. It's like a, like a transfusion. They put a needle in here. Your blood flows into a centrifuge, spinning out your stem cells. The rest of your flood, blood flows back in here. You take those stem cells like it did 12 years ago in, in Frankfurt. They brought the to the airport, flew Flew directly to DFW with that bag of white stem cells, came up to my room at Med City, plugged it into me, and Christine flowed into me, giving me life. If you think about it, folks, it's just like our Savior said. If you just accept him, if you just follow his way, if you just listen to him, he will flow into you and help run this life on earth, which is not an easy life. You all know that. So you start, Earl, you start Earl Young's team going around do, raising awareness, conducting swab drives, essentially, yeah. so, which is what we're doing today. How, how, as we're talking about service and sacrifice, particularly today, how can people serve? What are we asking them to do today? You know, when I started this, Josh, I, I thought about people ask what we do. Well, what we do is we go out, especially to universities where you've got those 18 to 25 stem cells before they ever begin to break down. That's the sweet spot, 18 to 25. So we work at, with universities uh, mostly. Matter of fact, my uh, 
uh, managing director uh, yesterday at Stanford. First time we were ever at Stanford. And we slobbed out there yesterday. Great, great opening for us on the West Coast. Um, but that's, that's our work, is, is swabbing, registering people so that we can save lives. But you know what else above all that that I think ranks a tier above? Those of you between 18 and 55 get a chance today to prove those words, I love you. You get to say that a lot nowadays. We say it more than, than I ever heard it growing up. It's a phrase we use just leaving somebody. I love you, I love you. Do you? Those are pretty strong words. You get to prove it here. And if you ever get a call that says, hey, it looks like you matched somebody, you get the ultimate proof. You get to save a life. Save a life for crying out loud. So what particularly today are we going to ask people to do when service is over? What people 18 to 55, the way they can serve as they leave today is to do, what, what's it going to be like for them? Very right? easy. All we're asking you to do today is fill out a short registration form and take three swabs, swab one minute in your mouth. We'll take that sample of that DNA, send it to the lab. They'll type it. It'll go into the international registry. And if you're lucky, one day you'll get a call that says, hey, looks like you save a life. Are you available? And I'm sure your answer will be yes. Okay, so here's the thing today. I, I mentioned last week to give us a little extra time. In just a minute, we'll sing a song, and we'll have our close by the elder. And when that's over, before you leave, if you're 18 to 55, and there's a few other things you can read on the form that might uh, preclude you from being able to swab, but overall, if you're 18 to 55, if you would, before you leave, stop out there. Our youth group and some others are going to help run this swab drive. It'll take you just a few minutes to fill out the form and get swabbed. Our church is a ministry partner to Earl Young's team. Earl Young is one of our members. This is a great way that we can support this man and, more importantly, that organization. And most important of all, those who might be diagnosed with these difficult blood diseases and need to find a match. We've had three people associated, associated with our church family who have been matches and who have been able to serve in different ways. Somewhere in this room might be the fourth and the fifth. So, Earl... I want to tell you what, I haven't been swabbed yet. I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to be out in the commons, and I'm going to go first, okay? So I may not be technically first, because i got to greet people, but I'm going to do this too, okay? I haven't done it yet. I'll do it when worship is over too, because this is important to me. So thank you, Earl, for joining me. Thank you all for your attention today. We are grateful uh, that we can partner with your organization, and we're glad you're with us, Earl. Would you give him one more round of applause? Guys, let me close with one more comment. I want you to know that we're almost at 30,000 swabbed, registered, and we've had 126. The video is, is short. And we're going to keep it short. Uh, 126 lives that came out of that swabbing. We are blessed.